brings me to my point. Why? <laughs> Why are you trying to use science? Why are you trying to use science to prove that God does not exist? When science itself is limited to that. I don't get it. <laughs> I am in my apartment doing some research, just trying to get myself in the mood by asking ChatGPT to help me with some video ideas. And then none of them were working for me. So I figured, why not just try throwing stuff at ChatGPT and see, like, just form an argument. Anyways, first, I wrote this prompt, right? <laughs> By the way, this chat already started and I was in the middle of it. And then I went like, eh, hey, I think it'll be great to do this video. I, I really want to show you what's going on. Why is science used to argue what's existing and what's not? When science is meant to explore or discover what is the unknown, uh, sorry, what's in the unknown and not necessarily defining or confining the unknown. Why is science defining slash detecting what could be and what couldn't? Now, my original intent for this question was to go along the lines of uh, why do scientists try to use science to disprove the existence of God or draw conclusive evidence on the existence of God? That is, uh, whether he's existing or not, like science have decided it. Like they came across some new information that none of us know about and they have concluded that God is not exist. It's actually an interesting conversation. First, it says that uh, your question touches on an important aspect of the relationship between science and our understanding of reality, which is cool. So first, it talks about the empirical nature of science, you know, that uh, science is based on empirical evidence and scientific methods, which involves making observations, forming hypotheses, conducting experiments and drawing conclusions, da, 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 of course. But then it's not that science just draws conclusions, it's that science goes through all of these individual processes before drawing conclusion. And the conclusions, oftentimes the last bit of, bit of it. Uh, next, it brought about, uh, say, exploration and discovery. So the primary purpose of science is to explore and discover the unknown. Scientists seek to expand their, their knowledge by asking questions, exploring, uh, uh, exploring new phenomena, um, and pushing the boundaries of our understanding. In this sense, science is a means of uncovering what is currently, of course. But then the original intent behind the question was that so let me pin this picture for you right take knowledge as a huge void or darkness you know just complete darkness and miles and miles of information that are not discovered now science is like the flashlight or the torch that you use to navigate that realm of darkness and uninhabited land so science is oh hey i'm walking in this darkness i found a rock oh yeah there is a tree here oh yeah there is water it doesn't account for i did not see a mountain therefore there is not mountain because once again remember there is miles and miles and miles of land to uncover right so the idea that science draws conclusion or scientists will draw conclusion on what hasn't been found and there is no evidence that it's not existing in the first place then it, it becomes nonsense right so but credit to gpt it did not stop there we have the third right defining and confining which is a point that i raised in the original prompt so it says however as science investigates the unknown it also seeks to provide explanations and models that helps us understand and predict natural phenomena of course uh this process can sometimes lead to defining and confining aspects of the unknown da, da, da. 
this once again makes sense because what they are saying is we uh it's not some it's not everything that science would probably would properly explain but because it have bits and pieces of information it could make prediction on certain aspects and sometimes those aspects will be wrong in fact many times right but it's not necessarily every model in science that is 100 percent factual at least that's what i understand uh it, it's getting more to the interesting to the interesting part this is um number four is theories and models uh, uh, scientific theories and models are our best attempts to explain once again it's just going on uh they provide frameworks for organizing our knowledge and making predictions and making predictions when a scientific theory becomes widely accepted it can shape the understanding of particular aspects of reality for sure number five good this is the fun part <laughs> says limitations of science science does have limitations it is inherently limited to the realm of observable observable and testable here yeah, right here observable and testable right it cannot answer questions about supernatural metaphysical or philosophical aspects of reality because these often these often lie beyond the scope of empirical investigation which brings me to my point why, <laughs> why are you trying to use science why are you trying to use science to prove that god does not exist when science itself is limited to that i don't get it <laughs> oh man this is cool this is so fun this is really fun Whew. when science itself is limited right so how can you use science to prove the existence of spirit at least as far as uh, 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 i know science haven't advanced to that level so sure maybe these ghost hunting movies have that ghost detector which i don't really believe but they do and for some reason some people believe that it's accurate or it's not accurate but science itself has not reached that conclusion hold on this is too interesting i gotta make sure that my phone is recording it's way too interesting Woo! good so gpt says that science is limited right to the observable and the testable meaning that you science cannot prove what you cannot see or test for example the existence of god you cannot see or test it how are you supposed to test the existence of angels i mean you could research uh stuff like artifacts from multiple cultures you could look into religious books and check their credibility and stuff like that but you can never really observe or test it by using the traditional scientific method so that's what they are saying anyways and then we'll go to the ba balancing act right uh science therefore performs a delicate balancing act why it seeks to explore the unknown it also aims to provide explanation for what it discovers these explanations are always subject to revision and refinement as uh new evidence emerges in this sense, science doesn't necessarily detect that. Uh, 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 sorry, science doesn't necessarily detect what could or couldn't exist, but rather offers our best current understanding based on available evidence. So, what GPT is saying is, when you start your walk in the darkness and you cover two miles, the amount of rats that you see, science will account that these are the rats that we have seen so far but it wouldn't necessarily tell you that these are the rocks that we will see ahead or we can expect not to find these type of rocks ahead because of this now there are some math there are some forms of mathematics that are awesome with predictions right whether it is the fibonacci sequence or any other sequence stuff that would uh recognize patterns based on setting criteria and then sorry criteria there, there shouldn't be an s there based on setting criteria and then predict uh future outcomes so of course there are a lot of 
but GPT is saying that unless that claim or model or hypothesis is observable and testable, science have absolutely nothing to do with it. Then you got the interplay with philosophy and ethics, which is like uh, questions about ex uh, what exists and what doesn't often extend beyond the scope of science and enter in and enters the domains of philosophy, ethics, and metaphysics. Science can inform these discussions, but it doesn't have a final say. Meaning that next time when your favorite scientist comes up and say that based on our research, we have concluded that there is no God, or as a scientist, I can tell you that there is no God, and you should believe me because I'm a scientist, you yourself using your common sense. You should let them know that they are lying because science will never, or science does not, at least in this generation, science does not give them the permission to do that. Or maybe it does. I don't know anything. Anyways, 